If you're feeling slick, you can probably find the solution to this equation just by inspection. But let's be a little more thorough than that. Multiply both sides by that quantity, root 2 minus root 3 all to the x. We have to multiply every term by this, and by playing around with properties of exponents, we see this square root times itself. Squaring a square root undoes that square root. We also get a nice thing going on with properties of exponents in the second term. We actually have a multiplication by the conjugate. This inner function is just going to be four minus three, since two times two is four, root three times root three is three, and that middle term is canceling out. That's great because under the radical is four minus three, that's one, and one to any power we'll just call one. Move everything to the left-hand side, and I hope you're feeling pretty strong about your factoring. You might notice that this actually factors as a perfect square. Using the radical as one half power, we can see the first term is the square of the second term. That's the tip off. This would factor into two minus root three, all to the x over two minus one times itself. Or we can just write that as quantity squared. Now this comes down to algebra rules and manipulating the terms. We could square root both sides. We'll say the square root of zero is zero. Add one to the other side. This is an exponential equation. We solve these by taking logarithms. Let's take the log of both sides. On the right, log of one is zero. And on the left, the reason we took the logarithm is to use those properties of logarithms. We can drop that exponent down front as a coefficient. This is now a linear equation. Just multiply by two, divide by this log term, which is just a constant x must be zero, which is probably what we got by inspection. However, if you want an even more interesting question and result, check out this video. I'll see you in that one.